Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Zulaikha binti Junaidi. So now I will share with you the relation between ratio analysis and market sharia. As we know, sharia is Islamic law derived from the Quran and Sunnah. And in my country, sharia is the purpose of the sharia itself, which is consists of five protection of religion, protection of life, protection of intellect, protection of wealth, and lastly, protection of lineage. Meanwhile, Sharia screening is a process conducted by Sharia scholars on the companies based on Makassid Sharia. And it is compulsory for a company to do Sharia screening if it wants to be given Sharia compliant status. Okay, so, let's proceed to the Sharia screening methodology. So, in classifying whether companies as Sharia compliant companies or non Sharia compliant companies, Sharia Advisory Council of Securities Commission had used three main methods to do Sharia screening, which are business screening, financial screening, and qualitative screening. So, first of all, we will discuss the business screening. Business screening, or also known as sector screening, is being conducted to investigate the nature of the core businesses. And according to Securities Commission, as long as the activities of the company are not contrary to the Sharia principle, so the company will be classified as Sharia compliant. While the company will be classified as Sharia non compliant company if it involves in several activities such as financial services based on riba, gambling and gaming activities, manufacture or sale of non halal products or related products. Conventional insurance, entertainment activities that are non permissible according to Sharia, manufacture or sale of tobacco based product or related products, stock broking or share trading in Sharia non compliant security, and other activities deemed non permissible to Sharia. The next stage of screening is financial screening. It is carried out to check the revenue of company whether they are free from prohibited income or involved in it under acceptable ratio that has been permitted by Sharia scholar. And the last stage of screening after the company has passed, the first two levels of screening is qualitative screening where things like maslaha, image or policy of company and public perception is considered. And usually it is done on a case-by-case case basis and does not involve any benchmark. Sharia Advisory Council has put guidelines and benchmark on the screening criteria in deciding whether the companies are Sharia compliant or not. Only when the company satisfies all the three levels of screen, then they are considered as Sharia compliant companies. Okay, now we proceed with the financial ratio benchmark. In assessing the financial management and performance of company, SAC of SC has put certain guidelines and benchmark. So, for the benchmark on income based on RIBA, it is 5%. In that, for the income based on RIBA, the maximum percentage of the income is only 5%. While the income based on prohibited element that cannot be avoided is only 10% maximum. Next, for the benchmark on income from rental payment from Sharia non compliant activities, SAC has put 20%. And lastly, for the income from generally permissible and have maslaha, but there are certain activities that may affect the Sharia status, is 25% maximum. Okay, now we'll discuss on the measures for company with both permissible and non-permissible activities. So, for the companies with activities comprising both permissible and non-permissible activities, the Sharia Advisory Council of Security Commission measures the level of mixed contributions from the permissible and non-permissible activities towards the turnover and profit before tax of the company. They will use the benchmark based on each ihat, which is Sharia-based reasoning. And if the contribution of non permissible activities exceed the benchmark, so the companies will classify as Sharia non compliant company. Next, SAC will assess the financial management of the company by applying the financial ratio. It is intended to measure RIBA 
and riba based elements within the company's statement of financial position. And lastly, as you see, we are also take into account the qualitative aspect which involves public perception or image of company's activities from Islamic perspective. In addition, Sharia Advisory Council also consider qualitative aspects in assessing financial management and performance of companies. So, the qualitative aspects include, firstly, company must have a good image. And the second qualitative aspect is the core activities of company must be important and considered as maslaha to Muslim and country. Which is the non-permissible element must be very small, involve the matters such as umum balwa, uruf or custom, and the rights of non-Muslim community which are accepted by Islam. Okay, the next section of our discussion today is I will share on the relation between Sharia screening and firm performance. So, in fact, Sharia compliance process actually contributes so much towards the good corporate governance. Among the contribution of Sharia compliance is the Sharia audit will ensure the systematic and effectiveness of the internal control system. And the Sharia audit also can improve the firm performance. In addition, Sharia compliance process will increase competency and work performance and also can help the company to oversee the operation. Hence, it will add value to the organization through systematic risk management. And lastly, the compliance will ensure work is done based on guidelines and proper manners. Hence, it will create good corporate governance. Okay, now we have arrived to our final part of our discussion. So, we'll discuss on the difference in performance of Sharia compliance firms and non-Sharia compliance firms. So, the difference of the performance will be divided into two categories which are based on region and based on period. So, first of all, we will see the difference in performance based on region. The region comprises of common law countries and civil law countries. And for both common law countries and civil law countries, the performance of Sharia compliance firms is lower relative to non Sharia compliance firms. Okay, so next we will see the difference in performance based on different periods. For the normal period, non Sharia compliant firms perform better than Sharia compliant firms because of the high leveraging and higher amount of cash available. High leveraging can act as disciplinary device and will induce the manager to work in the best interest of the shareholders, while the higher amount of cash available by the firm will enable the firm to fund larger capital expenditure and more projects because of internal financing costs are lesser than the external costs. Okay, so the next period we will see the difference in performance of the firms in the crisis period. So we can see that non Sharia compliant firms have lower performance than Sharia compliant firms in crisis period because of high leverage and high account receivable. High leverage exposed the non-sharia compliant firm to bankrupt series more relative to normal period while high account receivable exposed them to risk of non-payment by the client. Meanwhile, the Sharia compliance firms have better performance than Sharia compliance firms in the crisis period because of the low leverage, lower account receivable, and low cash reserve. The low leverage exposed the Sharia compliance firms to lower bankruptcy risk 
in a certain time period such as the crisis period while the low account receivable lower the risk of non-payment by clients and lastly the low cash reserve by Shanghai compliance firm will result in lower agency problems hence we can see that the financial characteristic of financial and compliance firms make it resilient to negative shocks such as in crisis period so that's all for today for our discussion thank you